Imagine the suffering inflicted on millions of slaves brought to America in chains since the first slave ship arrived in 1619. There were more than 4 million slaves in the United States in 1860, and their owners inflicted horrible punishments on them to keep them in line, being burned alive being only one of them. The slave owners made the modern equivalent of about $4 billion in 1860, more than all the banks, railroads, and factories at this time and at the expense of their slaves. The slaves worked from dawn to dusk in the cotton plantations and the rich households, and their owners punished them for the slightest error, taking a rest, speaking their native language, or trying to run away to freedom and getting caught. Welcome to Uncharted History. Today, we will be showing you the truly awful methods of punishment that slave owners use to amuse themselves in the land of the so-called free. These hellish punishments are not for the faint of heart. The hogshead was a truly painful and horrible punishment that most people have never heard of. In 1838, Moses Roper wrote a book about his tragic life as a slave. He was born in 1815 to an African and Native American mother and an English father, but Roper wasn't born free. He grew up as a slave to his English father before he escaped to England much later at the age of 19. He himself endured terrible punishments. Mr. Gooch had gone to church several miles from his house. When he came back, the first thing he did was to pour some tar upon my head, then rubbed it all over my face, took a torch with pitch on and set it on fire. He put it out before it did me very great injury, but the pain which I endured was most excruciating, nearly all my hair having been burned off. In his book, Roper wrote that American slave owners had odd hobbies, one of them being the hogshead. Slaves would be placed into large barrels with nails hammered into them. The barrels would then be rolled down long, steep hills. As the nails punctured the people inside, many didn't survive. These sadistic slave owners really enjoyed this sport. Other slaves were forced to watch and count their blessings that it wasn't them rolling down the hill. Roper witnessed the hogshead and it haunted him forever. The slave trade in the United States had been immensely profitable. The economic value of the 4 million slaves in 1860 was, on average, $1,000 per person or about $4 billion total, more than all the banks, railroads, and factories that existed in the U.S. at this time. But competition was fierce, and slave owners had to mark their property. Branding was the method they used to mark slaves for life. Their flesh was seared with a heated instrument. Large companies branded their slaves to prevent theft and resale. Others branded them to make them easily identifiable. But branding wasn't solely used for ownership. In Louisiana, there was a code noir of punishments that could be used against slaves, so slaves could be branded as a punishment for running away. By 1840, New Orleans had the largest slave market in all of America, so the brandings were far too many to count. Slaves had their faces branded with letters or other identifiable marks. No other household would then be able to take these slaves. They belonged to their masters, who could do whatever they wanted with them. During the 1830s, stretching from Virginia, Maryland to Washington, Isaac Franklin and John Armfield were two of the cruelest domestic slave traders in American history. They called their slave trade business Franklin and Armfield. They also owned a slaveholding pen in a townhouse in Alexandria, Virginia. Franklin and Armfield bought and sold women and marketed them as fancy maids. They preyed on the young, mistreating them and selling them on. On occasion, the slave masters even sexually abused married women. That's how little respect they had for their slaves. Their husbands couldn't help them because they would have been punished even worse. There was a convenient misconception that black women were lustful beings in contrast to white women, portrayed as perfect, pure, and modest. Black women became the object of the white man's desire and fantasies. Slave owners felt justified to engage in consummate with black women with or against their will. Sometimes female slaves would agree to their advances because they saw it as their only chance of freedom, but most of the time it was false hope. Isaac Franklin's nephew, James, repeatedly abused an 18-year-old slave called Caroline Brown for five months straight. The family even bragged about sexually assaulting their slaves. It gave them a sense of power and pleasure. Getting whipped is a punishment as old as time. I bet some of you know exactly what it feels like. It isn't great, but slaves got it much worse. They were beaten no matter how old they were or in what condition. 
even pregnant women and children were whipped as punishment. The worst part is that some slave owners were so desperate to beat their slaves again that they wouldn't allow their old wounds to heal first. Clearly, they didn't care. The slave owners got to a point where they couldn't stop. They would whip them again and again, splitting open the already existing wounds. To make matters even worse, they would then smear red pepper or pour turpentine into the open wounds. Some slaves were unfortunate enough to have a mixture of rubble, dust, and lard rubbed into their gashes. The pain would be unimaginable. There is a picture of a slave called Gordon. His other name is Whipped Peter. His back has a lattice of scars from all the repeated whippings. His back never healed properly. His body is an open wound. In 1808, the U.S. Act prohibiting importation of slaves came into effect. This caused a shortage of slaves in the South, but that didn't mean the end of slavery. On the contrary, the internal slave market boomed. There was an increased demand for black people. Female slaves were bought and sold based on their age, looks, and most important of all, their childbearing capabilities. Their children made the white man rich. Slaves who became pregnant rarely got any medical care or special treatment. Instead, they were treated even more harshly by their owners' wives. Spite and jealousy ruled the American households. Despite the sexual misdeeds of their masters, male slaves were also directly involved in taking advantage of female slaves. Owners would force their male slaves to sleep with slave women in order to have more children. The enslaved women took care of these children because their union was not legally recognized. These children would then be sold off to continue the cycle. Between the 1820s and 1830s, Isaac Franklin and John Armfield, the undisputed tycoons of the American slave trade, separated mothers from their children and separated families. Franklin himself fathered a child with an enslaved woman, but he sold her and her baby right after he got married to a rich socialite. Armfield also fathered children with enslaved women. Both of them were playing with the lives of their slaves and spreading this message to other slave owners around the country, creating a culture of ruthlessness. Slavery is one of the most atrocious things that has ever happened in America. It caused the suffering of at least 10 million people since an English ship dragged the first slaves here in 1619. Imagine being chained up, not being able to move around, not being able to do anything you want. You must sit and wait and be told what to do. Chains were used to hold slaves incarcerated. Captured Africans were shackled together for weeks on end on their dreadful voyage to America. Much harsher treatment was given to the runaway slaves. They were chained to other slaves or to their workstations forever. Slaves were also shackled together in a long line to complete tedious tasks. This is where the idea of chain gangs in U.S. prisons originated. There was one notorious slave owner in the 19th century whose insane treatment of slaves is legendary. Her name is Madame Delphine Lalori. She had slaves chained up and suspended by their necks in the attic of her mansion in New Orleans. These slaves were chained up with spiked iron collars. They had tiny cages that forced them to stand in difficult positions. Their limbs would stretch and tear. Some of these slaves had their skin flayed off, eyes gouged out, and their mouths filled with excrement and sewn shut. That's how evil this woman was. Madame Delphine clearly enjoyed causing pain. Once, she moisturized her face with a baby's blood. Luckily, a fire broke out in her house in 1834 and her evil deeds came to an end, or so it is believed. The elderly female slave shackled to the stove started the fire because she had no other way out. After they put the fire out, they found her in the attic. By now you must be wondering, what could possibly be worse than being branded, imprisoned, or chained? There's something worse, and that is to be mutilated. Slaves were treated worse than farm animals. At least farm animals are allowed to keep their limbs, that's to say, until they're slaughtered and eaten. Slaves, on the other hand, could still be useful, even if they were missing a limb or two. So slave owners would order body mutilation, cutting off ears, gouging out eyes, cutting hamstrings, amputating arms and legs, or castrating. Some succumbed to infection and others from blood loss. Slave owners used mutilation as an extreme form of punishment. These cruel slave owners would give out this harsh punishment to slaves caught fighting with each other or resisting their overseers. These disfigured slaves were still expected to work in the cotton plantations, in the fields, or in their masters' homes. Their masters absolutely did not care. The scary part is that these gruesome acts were not uncommon. Surely there can't be anything worse than mutilation, right? Wrong. 
The last, most horrible thing that American slave owners did to their slaves is public burnings. Slaves were tied to a stake or tied above a fire. Slaves often fainted from inhaling the smoke before the fire could scorch their bodies. But most of the time, they endured agony as their flesh burned away from their bones. This is considered to be one of the most painful ways to lose one's life. Other slaves were forced to watch the burnings. This would serve as a warning. Don't behave and you will be next. Slave owners from nearby towns would often pitch up to watch. Despite slavery being abolished in 1865, public lynching continued into the 20th century. It's important not to forget the atrocious things slaves had to endure. They hold a place in American history. More than 100 U.S. leaders, including presidents, lawmakers, governors, and judges, have ancestors that owned slaves and treated them so badly. Shame on them. This was History Uncharted. See you next time.